Well, hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today, we're gonna do something a little bit different because look at this. The water is in solid form. <laughs> we had a massive cold front come through and yeah, the water is just ice at this point. So I don't think fishing is on the agenda, but I am able to do some other fishing related things. And that is, uh, I had alluded to in the last video about how I was going to turn my shed into an abide shed, a kayak shed. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do today. Uh, I'm gonna take you along if you wanna join for the ride. Uh, let me show you the first difficulty in turning this into a kayak shed. First thing that I gotta do is be able to get my kayak in here. And let me show you one of the problems. Now, as you can see here, the deck is all rotten out. Um, you know, big holes that are in the actual plywood. Um, so I knew all of that was gonna have to be replaced as well as inside the shed. Uh, it's pretty rotten in there too. So we started demoing. Um, whenever you watch one of these HGTV shows, it always looks like it's so much fun, you know, demoing, oh, we're gonna demo. And they you know, hit a couple walls with a sledgehammer and it looks like fun in games. It's not, it's wet, it's nasty, it's it's pretty, pretty brutal actually. The plan was I was just going to replace the plywood um, and leave the framing intact. Um, but as you'll see, Ed, the further I got along in there, uh, the more it became obvious that that, that wasn't going to work. All the framing was rotted out, so the job got significantly more difficult. So, all the framing had to go. Now you see here that the ramp before wasn't flashed, so you had you know, water getting in between the, the ramp and the joist there, so I knew that had to be done. Um, so put a piece of flashing between the, the ramp and the shed joist to keep some of that water out. But then there's also just a design problem here that the overlap, the overhang didn't protect it very well so I actually added another piece so I could wrap it over the top and protect the floor from where that that little lip is exposed as well now I'm not a framer so I don't know how they do this in the field but I needed to know what the angle for my cuts were for my ramp um, I knew I had a right angle and I knew the height was 16 and a quarter inches and I also knew that the run was going to be eight foot, um, but I didn't know what the angles were. But fortunately, there's an app for that. So I just went on the, uh, the internet and uh, did a right angle calculator, put my numbers in there, and uh, it gave me the, the angles that I needed for my cuts. That's pretty cool. So after I made my first Joyce cuts, I... Uh, Dug a little hole and put a block down there to kind of act as a foundation so that the wood wouldn't be in constant contact with the earth. Uh, and then I laid it out and uh, just made sure that it would work. And then the good news is, once you get one that works, you can use that one as a template for all your other ones. So I just used the scrap piece and then I could use that as my template for my other cuts. So here it is, the, the new framing that is in place, putting in the last ramp joist. And then here I am with my video camera, admiring my handiwork, and then immediately realizing that I mounted one of them at the wrong height and having to redo what I had just done. Um, that's no job is complete without having to do your work two or three times. So that's what, what that's what it ended up looking like. Uh, the framing, at least, uh, you got so lumber supported on joist hangers, supported on blocks, properly flashed and fastened with uh, joist hangers, joist angles. 
So when I moved into the house, there was a bunch of old uh, 16 foot long decking boards that were just laying out in the yard. So I figured I'd put those to good use and that's what I would use as my uh, actual ramp deck rather than going back with the plywood. Um, so I cut those off into eight foot pieces. The problem is I knew it wouldn't match the new lumber that I had. So you can see there, I kind of staggered it in a, like an alternating pattern to make it look like I knew what I was doing and I wasn't just trying to save on lumber. Um, and then, you know, as I was installing them, you know, I would use a 10 penny nail as my spacer between the boards so that you got room for expansion. And then you can kind of see right there how I alternated as I went down the ramp. Also, when I moved in, there was a couple bundles of old shingles that were left in the shed. And I figured that ramp, you know, when it got wet with rolling the, you know, a wet kayak up and down the ramp, I figured it would get kind of slippery. So um, I just got grabbed a couple of those old shingles and uh, laid them out and tacked those onto the, the face of the ramp just to get a little bit extra traction uh, for lugging a kayak up and down the ramp. Well guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up for today's episode. I think it turned out pretty good. Look at that. Good traction, nice and sturdy. So I should be able to get my kayak up this ramp and into the shed. Gotta get rid of the debris and do some cleanup and stuff. But mission one, step one in this multi-step process and turning this into the abide shed. Um, is underway. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. If you'd like to know anything about what I did today, you can look down in the description box. I'm gonna leave a uh, brief description of the stuff that I did and what I used. As always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. The channel, it is updated every week with new fishing content and new fishing adventures. So, I'll be seeing you next week. This is Josh, and this is Abide Fishing.